if I never do anything else again in my life, I suppose I've got to be quite satisfied with getting some of the people down here to Oxford that uh, are sitting in front of me at this moment in time. I'm so happy that we have such a high entry in Q12 2007. I actually don't know who's going to win. Many people might pick out some people and say the favourites. I would actually back the field against anybody, any single individual who, are, who is lined up here. The uh, people we've brought down with us today, uh, Peter's going to introduce them and then hand over to, to Jeremy. And we're going to start all the way from Ireland with... Well, in our grand final tonight, Steve, we have Judith Searle, contestant number one. She's travelled down from Moira in County Down, where she works uh, as receptionist in Lagan Valley Hospital. She's the winner of the Irish Heat. She has represented Ireland in Your Country Needs You and made the grand final of the People's Quiz, notably edging out two of today's other competitors. Her uh, specialist subject, she says, is history with an edge of astrophysics. <laughs> Number two is Dave Taylor. Um, he uh, is a transport manager at Sunderland Council. His specialist subject, he says, is science. Uh, he's performed perhaps the most amazing victory of any Q12 round in Newcastle, nailing nine out of the last ten questions to overturn the North East's finest. Hmm. Dave plays for an all-conquering Gosforth Empire team in the Newcastle and District Sports Quiz League, but claims specialisms in maths and natural histories as well as his science special. Rob Hanna, number three, is the sole representative of the southwest of England. <coughs> He's self-employed, but specialises as a professional quiz writer. Um, he has not seen, we have not seen him much on the quiz circuit until this year, but since his walkover win in Torquay, he seems to have been omnipresent. Fast, knowledgeable and lucky, if Rob can make it through the first round, his bravery could see him being the left field finalist. Um, his specialist subject, I think, is the arts. Martin Riley. He's a business analyst and um, comes from Lytham and has appeared in four 15 to 1 grand finals, winning once. His victory in Weston came at the expense of several first class players. And at 8 to 1, those are the odds, he might be the pick of the betting. He's no specialist subject, particularly, he tells me. Darren Martin of Chorley. He has won the strongest round of Q12 yet in Merseyside, fending off. A lineup worthy of any quiz final. A finalist in Mastermind three years ago, uh, Darren has won significant amounts on Come and Have a Go, Millionaire, and The Machine, of which he's the champion. A specialist subject, he tells me, is pop music, and he is a project analyst. Number six contested tonight in the final is Kevin Ashman. Kevin is a question setter and a professional TV appearer. His specialist subject, he tells me, is history. Um, he's from Winall in Hampshire and is quite simply regarded as possibly the top quizzer in Britain over the last decade. Mastermind, Brain of Britain, 15 to 1 champion of champions, Brain of London for the last five years. He is now captain of the Eggheads team on television and stalwart of the all sorts. Six times champion of the Quiz League of London and perhaps starts as favourite to win Q12. 2007. Next is Pat Gibson of Wigan. He has the unique distinction of holding both Mastermind and Brain of Britain titles simultaneously, for good measure winning the jackpot on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in the same period. Having won the coveted Merseyside Quiz League's individual title, Pat currently plays for Sims Road, champions of the Oral Quiz League and Ormskirk champions. The old dog. Having attracted an avalanche of bets to win Q12, he consequently has no chance. <laughs> According to question setter and bookmaker Steve Kidd, that is. He is by profession a software developer and a specialist subject in science. Mark Kerr is from Rainhill in Lancashire and is one of the most active players on the circuit. Uh, Britain's cleverest estate agent, finalist on Discovery Mastermind, winner of a quarter of a million pounds on Millionaire, and the finalist in 100% gold, champion of champions. His specialist subject is music. Number nine tonight is Peter Edis. He's a primary school teacher, 
and is our London champion. He very nearly didn't make it to Purley, but his victory there indicated that combination of knowledge and critically speed necessary for Q12. Peter actually registered an amazing 1.6 second fastest finger first on Millionaire, and that he was the first person to make the stage on Millionaire Live against 2,000 others indicate his alacrity. His specialist subject is sport with an edge towards popular, popular culture. Number 10, Diane Halligan is a quiz legend. Captain of the British Master Team, captain of the Come and Have a Go champions, captain of the All Conquering Wanderers in the Five Towns Quiz League. Diane's individual exploits encompass wins on Mastermind, 100% gold, champion of champions, one of only three jackpot winners on Millionaire Live, and a quarter of a million pounds on the TV show. She's an accountant. Uh, her specialist subject would be classical music, she would say, with an edge towards also food and drink. She was beaten, ironically, by the narrowest of margins by Pat Gibson in the Pontefract round of Q12. But does Diane have the experience and the persistence to turn the tables? Number 11 tonight is Gwilym Owen. He flies the flag for Wales, as he did when winning Beat the Nation and representing the Principality in Your Country Needs You. He's a project officer at Cardiff University with a specialist subject in geography. He tells me his aim is to be the last winner of the jackpot on Millionaire. And our last finalist is Mike Abbott, who we've uh, just seen win the last round. Uh, in Sterling style, uh, he is managing director of a company who seek out and support inventors to develop their products. His specialist subject is UK geography. Over one and a half million pounds worth of talent today will be competing for the prestigious Q12 Cup. But asking the questions is the man who's hosted several of the most popular programs on British television. A quiz legend in his own right, Will you please welcome author, raconteur, quiz fan, and the most successful host in television history, Mr. Jeremy Beadle, MBE. Hurrah! Hooray! Well, I certainly didn't recognize myself from that description, but thank you very much. Uh, I have to say, to be in the presence of these great quiz players is a real treat. And we've got a fantastic set of questions here, and I think uh, they're not going to beat them. But will the tactics? Good luck. Remember, it's not the winning that's important. It's just how big is the prize, and it's the thousand pounds. So it certainly is worth winning. Good luck to you all. Good luck to you all. Fingers on buzzers. The first round, as you know, it's we're going to lose four of you. We're going to eliminate four. Uh, it's 12 minutes of questions. Uh, a point for a correct answer. An incorrect answer means you lose half your current score. Bit nerve-wracking. Good luck to you all. In 1703, at the age of 25, whose ordination led to him being nicknamed El Preti Rozzo? Six. Kevin Ashman. Vivaldi. Correct. A blow to Marco Mazzarazzi ended whose illustrious... Three. Rob Hanna. Zinedine Zidane. Very, very quick indeed. Zidane, the footballer. Hotter than July, talking... Seven. Pat Gibson. Stevie Wonder, you know, can I, can I ask one word, please, you know, before you buzz in? Please, it's for the people at home as well. Goodness me, they're all uh, albums by Stephen Hardway Junkin, Stevie Wonder. Which Icelandic settlement suffers the constant antagonism of an anti-hero who spends an ironic amount of time and effort persuading the kids to eat junk food? Four, Martin Riley. Lazy Town. Lazy Town, how on earth do you watch that? I've got a six-year-old and a twelve-year-old here. Ah, <laughs> very good. Lazy town. Very good. Sportigus. On Monday, the 3rd of December, 2007, in the Sri Lankan city of Kandy, when Paul Collingwood was... Nine. Peter Edis. Uh, Mataya Muralithwin, uh, the record for the most test wickets. Absolutely correct. Full answer there, indeed. He became... got the 709th victim. Which product made by Quaker is described as... Seven. Pat Gibson. Crackers. It's worth a guess, but wrong. You lose half your accumulated score, which really makes a dramatic difference. 
Which product made by Quaker is described as light and crispy bubbled corn and rice munches? Which twelve, Mike Abbott. Rice Krispies. Not Rice Krispies, but again, at this stage of the game, it's worth the gamble. Come in a variety of flavours, both sweet and savoury, including cheddar cheese. Five, Darren Martin. Snacker Jacks. It is Snacker Jacks. <laughs> it's, <laughs> its biggest cities are Burlington and Rutland. Six, Kevin Ashman. Vermont. Very quick indeed. Vermont indeed. Born in 1967, his autobiography is the Tell All Augenblick Verweil Doch. English title, The Player, published... Eight, Mark Kerr. Becker, Boris Becker. Inspired, well done, Boris Becker. Also born in 1967, which fictional character attained the rank of colonel with the Christian names Daniel McGregor, who was the Eagles... Two, Dave Taylor. Dan Dare. <laughs> what was that Dare? I think a lot of you knew that. Over which programme, screened in 2005, has a Christian group lost its high court... Six, Kevin Ashman. Jerry Springer, the opera. Superb. I, I, you leave me breathless, gentlemen, breathless. Name the American legal clerk who, despite the lack of formal law school education... Six, Kevin Ashman. Erin Brockovich. Again, you read it so quickly. I mean, I'm still listening to the first two words. Akaba, Erbid, Karak, Man, Zaka, and the largest city and capital, Amman. Five, Darren Martin. Jordan. Jordan, well done. Who, in December 2007, said, I have received texts from many players who I've worked with and top managers, and I've really appreciated them. Of course, I couldn't get emails because now I haven't got... Seven, Pat Gibson. Harry Redknapp. It was Harry Redknapp. Done. What's the chemical formula or name for carborundum? Ten, Diane Halligan. I haven't the faintest idea. Seven, Pat Gibson. Silicon carbide. Correct. Nothing lasts forever. Even the longest, most glittering rain must come to an end. Ten, Diane Halligan. House of Cards. Superb. It was the initial observation made by Ian Richardson, playing the part of the Francis Urquhart. A small bird in the Finch family, native to islands in the Atlantic. What kind of bird is... Nine. Peter Edis. Canary. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I was going to say Tweety Pie, which everybody would have got. <coughs> well, come in. Antonio. Salarino. Salarnio. Eight. Mark Kerr. Salieri. No. And Shylock. All... Three. Rob Hanna. The Merchant of Venice. Indeed. Ripley, Barrett and Fossey are all characters... Four. Martin Riley. Uh, alien. No. Seven. Pat Gibson. Uh, Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver is the answer. In which year did Alaska become the... Eight. Mark Kerr. 1959. Superb. 1959, the 49th state. In terms of surface area, the largest freshwater one in the world, which is the largest of America's... Eight, Mark Kerr. Superior, Lake Superior. Superior. It's these buzzers. You all know the answers, I know, but you've got to get in there, guys. You've just got to get in there. In which city were the 2003 Athletics World Championships held? Eleven, Gwilym Owen. Oh, that's the wrong one now. Um, I was going to say Manchester. It's not Manchester. 12. Mike Abbott. Tokyo. Not Tokyo. You lose half or nothing there, Mike. Anybody want to come in? Guess? 9. Peter Edis. Helsinki. Not Helsinki. If you're on nothing, it's worth a quick guess. No? Audience. Correct. Paris. <laughs> Which is the second most populous of the Great Antilles? A single... Nine. Peter Edis. Uh, Hispaniola. No. Which is the second... Eight. Mark Kerr. Jamaica. No. Which is the second most populous of the Great... Eleven. Gwilym Owen. Is it Puerto Rico? No. Greater Antilles. A single by the Gibson brothers. 
Five, Darren Martin. Cuba. Cuba is... <laughs> it was the geography that gave it there. Following a fire, what was scrapped in Hong Kong in 1970? Four, Martin Riley. Queen Elizabeth. Indeed, well done. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's amazing because everybody is buzzing in, but they can't get there fast enough. With Antipodean, Amsterdam, Tristan, Northern Royal, Southern Royal and Wandering Varieties, what kind of bird... Four, Martin Riley. Very good indeed, Albatross. That's a difficult question. What is chronologically the first of the Asian novels of James Clavell and shares a title... Nine, Peter Edis. Um, Shogun. It is Shogun. Well done. Introduced as a medal event at the Olympics in 1984, what's one of the few events in which heavy eye... Number one, Judith Searle. Synchronised swimming. Superb answer. Well done. <laughs> what, what gave it away? I think it was a date and um, we had a quiz question in one of our um, quizzes recently um, about synchronised swimming and it was that year that... Absolutely cannot. excellent. It was synchronised swimming. Um, I was going to ask for a few events which heavy eye makeup may confer an advantage. <laughs> we won't go into details. Give either of the two word terms applied to that pathway by which food... Eight. Mark Kerr. The alimentary canal. Indeed. Or digestive tract. How is the letter N for November represented in Morse code? Twelve. Mike Abbott. Uh, dash dot. Well done. Well done, well done indeed. <laughs> to go through the alphabet and Morse code that fast, very good indeed. March 5th, 1953 was the death date of which Russian... Eight, Mark Kerr. Stalin. It was. Whew. How many Swiss cantons are there? Likewise, a joke throw at darts, red... Six. Kevin Ashman. 26. It is 26. What is a porphyrin? P. 11. Gwillem Owen. Is it a stone? No. P O R I F E R A N. Porphyrin. 7. Pat Gibson. Sponge. It is a sponge. Peripherin. The most important role of which organ is protecting the body against pathogens? Other main functions are insulation and. T 9. Peter Edis. Uh, the pancreas. Not the pancreas. Four, Martin Riley. The skin. Skin. Well done, Martin. Which northerly stately home was used in TV's adaptation? Twelve, Mike Abbott. Castle Howard. Castle Howard. Didn't even wait for Brideshead Revitters, did then? Fantastic quality of answers. Well done. Fort Knox is in... W Nine, Peter Edis. Kentucky. It is in Kentucky. <laughs> With which song did Status Quo open live at... Eight, Mark Kerr. Rocking all over the world. It was rocking all over the world. Which Commonwealth country's parliamentary building is known as the B? Six, Kevin Ashman. New Zealand. It is New Zealand. Very fast. God, that was quick. Barrow and Parker. Are Eleven, Gwilym Owen. I'll just have to say Alaska with that. But... Number no, five, Darren Martin. Bonnie and Clyde. It was Bonnie and Clyde. Barrow, Alaska, yes, I understand where you came from there, Gwil and Bad Luck. You've got to get in there, got to get in there. Summer Bay is a setting. Nine, Peter Edis. In a way. It is home and away. I'm sorry if anybody at home isn't getting the questions. We're trying, I'm really trying, <laughs> honestly. A Manx Shearwater. Eight, Mark Kerr. A type of uh, seabird, a guillemot, I think, to be exact. I wasn't expecting the full definition. A bird would have done. <laughs> what was the name of the intruder who managed to enter the... Seven, Pat Gibson. Fagan. It was Fagan, Michael Fagan. Name the polar bear born in... Ten, Diane Halligan. Canute. It was Canute. Well, Canute, but I'm accepting Canute because I like you. <laughs> I went to it see him. Canute. I went to see him in June. Who reached number one in 2001 with Queen of My Heart? Nine, Peter Edis. Uh, Westlife. It was Westlife. Which country is due west of Land's End? 11, Gwilym Owen. Oh, um, I'll just have to say... Uh, uh, I need an answer. Yeah, USA. No. 3, Rob Hanna. K. 
Canada. Canada. Bad luck, Willem. Still getting in there, still getting in there. In December 1939, at which battle was the... Ad Number six, Kevin Ashman. River Plate. Very quick oh. indeed, on the date only. <laughs> on the date only. Battle of the River Plate, I was going to say the Admiral Graf Spey scuttled. Alphabetically, which is the last of the US state? Three, Rob Hanna. Wyoming. Excellent. Oh, smart, smart. Which breed of gun dog, probably originating in Russia, but more associated... Twelve. With Mike Abbott. Bortzoi. Not Bortzoi. Oh, Mike, what have you done to yourself? Which breed of gun dog, probably originating in Russia, but more associated with France, can still be seen in that role? The show clips revolved from working clips, which originally provided warmth. Five. Darren Martin. Poodle. It is the poodle. <coughs> Who are the first two female stars of Whatever Happened to Baby Jane? Twelve. Mike Abbott. Joan Crawford and Betty Davis. Well done. Got back in. Leopold, Albert and Baldwin. Eight. Mark uh, Belgium, King of the Belgians. They are all kings of Belgium. Malaga is on which cost? Five. Darren Martin. Costa del Sol. Costa del Sol. For whom did little Eva most famously babysit? Twelve. Mike Abbott. Uh, Jerry Goffin and Carol King. Well, Carol King would have been good enough, but if she gave me both, I could still only give you one point, but well done. A minute to go, Peter. Where are we? Well, yeah, with that minute to go, let me tell you that the interesting area of the scoreboard is really around uh, Mike Abbott, Diane Halligan, Judith, Dave and Gullim. Whilst we've got plenty of positive points in the other half of the board, around about three and two marks, where all the interest lies. Oh... This is real nerve-wracking stuff. Good luck to you all. Good luck. Accent, Avatar and Elantra are all models made by which motor manufacturer? Four, Martin Riley. Honda. No. Oh. Number two, Dave Taylor. Hyundai. Yes! You got yourself out of trouble. Well done. <laughs> Rupert Bear appears in which newspaper? One, Judith Searle. Daily Express. It is the Daily Express. You've done it. Good job. <laughs> oh. How is Ursula Southall... Better known in Yorkshire folklore. Five, Darren Martin. Mother Shipton. It is Mother Shipton, despite my mispronunciation. <laughs> How many US presidents have been assassinated? Number three, Rob Hanna. Four. Correct. The Roman god of the sea and the... Number one, Judith Searle. Neptune. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Harry just met Sally. What mythical creature has a lion's body and the head and wing... Ten, Diane Halligan. Griffin. Well done, Diane. Well done. You've got yourself in there. Peter, we've got one question. Oh, nerve-wracking. Good luck to you all. Of which pre-Columbian Mesoamerican peoples of Central Mexico was Bontes... Number one, Judith Searle. Aztecs. Yes! <laughs> oh! That was exciting. That really, really we have a was playoff. excellent. Yeah. Which now means, Peter... Well, unfortunately, let me summarise first of all to say that we, un we lose Gwilym Owen, Martin Riley and Dave Taylor. Uh, bad luck to them and well done for getting this far in the final. Sterling effort. <laughs> we, we do, however, have one more place to join them, unfortunately, and it's got to be between Diane Halligan and Mike Abbott, who are both on three points. A playoff between Diane and Mike to carry, th carry on. How many black squares are there on a chessboard? Ten. Diane Halligan. Thirty-two. Correct! <laughs> <laughs> Wow, now that just goes to show, it's, it's the speed, it's the tactics, do you go for it, how fast you go for it, excellent play, I'm sad to see our four players lose our four players, all absolutely top ranking quiz players, and it's been a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, on to the next round.